What is up, guys? Pittsburgh Weiss Schwartz back again with another digital deck tech for you. Today, I'm talking about one of the few decks that I play in Japanese, uh, Monogatari, specifically the uh, Hanakawa 2 2 bar build of the deck. Uh, so let's let's jump right into it. So for the first card here, we have the Hachikuji Riki. This card is your main plussing engine in the early game, and also uh, kind of acts as a beater for you due to the fact that it can give a character 1500 power when it side attacks. The the deck isn't particularly strong at level zero, especially if you go first, you're often just leaving a weak vanilla body on the board. And this helps you uh, helps you overcome the the negging that you experience at level zero, especially since you're not running a plusing uh, a plusing combo in this deck. The side attack is pretty wonky. Oh yeah, it I'm is. here by the way. <laughs> I did forget to mention that. No, it's fine. Um, but yeah, the side attack's kind of wonky, but I guess. It's a Ricky, so it pluses in other ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it searches for a level one or lower character. So oftentimes you'll be searching for either an extra beater to play at zero or something to help yourself fix at level one. One of your uh, your two tools we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, but that's about it. On to the next card. Uh, I run three copies of uh, Bat Clan Shinobu. <laughs> Uh, this card is your other quote-unquote beater in the deck. Uh, it goes up to 3,500 on the turn it's played. This is uh, kind of what I was getting at on the last card when I mentioned that if you go first, this being at 3,500 is almost irrelevant. It's basically a 2k body. But the uh, the second effect is really where this card shines. Whether it's in the front or the back row, when another one of your characters is front attacked, you can pay one and sack this card and bounce the attacked character to your hand. So you're able to protect your priority targets, such as uh, the Akatsuki, which I'm going to talk about shortly, or any other card that has a powerful uh, uh, comes in playability which this deck has quite a few of that I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, aside from that, it just forces your opponent to think harder during their combat, which uh, which oftentimes can force them to misplay or even just... Uh, Deny reverse. And, oh, and of course, yeah. And the, the card also uh, is reverse denial, so it's strong against on-reverse combos. And also, if this in the, is the front row and is already reversed, then sacking it is a non-cost. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. Even more synergy there. Yeah, so that's your your opponent has to uh, even further consider their attack order in that case. All right, next card. I run three copies of this bad brainstorm. <laughs> uh, gives gives 500 power to your uh, character in the center position of your front row and is a rest to search brainstorm. So just for strange characters. This is, unfortunately, aside from the Ricky, the only plussing engine in the deck and the best brainstorm that Monogatari has to offer. Rest in peace. Yeah, so you... We, we run this card because we have to run this card. Yeah, not great, but old sets, you play with what you have. Yeah, luckily there is... Uh, there is one card fresh off the ban list that this card uh, is okay with sitting in the back row with. So there's a little bit of a silver lining there, but... Yeah, not great. No. Rest 2 is just pretty bad these days, but, you know, you have other mill tools in the deck, so not too bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, fi 500 to uh, middle character can be relevant, especially since this is a wall-ish deck, which we'll talk about shortly. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about this Araragi. He is on play mill three and pops the stock when your opponent plays a climax. This is another one of those cards that is deceptively powerful in this list. It's more reverse denial and it helps accelerate you through your first deck, especially since you don't have a uh, 
a rest one brainstorm to help you do that. Unfortunately, this doesn't help you pay out your climaxes or anything like that, but uh, the Shinobu Bat Clan does give you a little bit of a stock out. Gives you some uh, much needed deck speed for an old deck. Yeah, it, mm, and that's that's why we run three copies of this card. And he goes to stock. Pretty good. Yeah, stock chart. Stock. You do got to pay a lot to get your cats out there in the mm. beginning. So. All right. Uh, the next card. This is the card fresh off the ban list. Uh, global 500 to all of your strange characters. And has on play, if you have experience four or higher, you can discard any card from your hand, search your deck for a strange character. So it is a costless drop search if you are experienced four or higher. That also gives all of your characters global five, which is, again, particularly relevant because, as we'll talk about, the, uh, the Hanakawa 2-2s, two the combo, sit fairly large in the front row, and this helps them stay at least somewhat relevant and threatening and difficult to hit over in combination with the, uh, the power buff from the Brainstorm as well. This is the card that wants to sit in the back row with the Brainstorm and just just kind of exist there as a global 500 power after you pop its effect off. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of a duality with this card where you want it on the field to provide the power, but you also want to hold it as a utility card. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is to be decided. I mean, the earliest it can come online is level 2, right? Correct, so. yeah. After you level your second card. So maybe you hold it until level 2, search one of your cats, something like that. Yeah, and that, that is usually what ends up happening, especially since the global 500 power is primarily to support the, uh, the Hanakawas as well. All right, next card. In a similar vein, this card is on play if you have experience four or higher, salvage a character, ditch a card. So this, uh, in combination with the previous card, fulfills a similar role, but uh, gives you access to your waiting room as well. So come the late game, you can, with those, the combination of all of these cards, have access to literally anything that you could possibly want, unless every copy of whatever you're looking for is in your stock somehow, which which can happen. It's white Schwartz. We, we love white Schwartz, yeah. Yeah, it can happen. And that is it for the level zero cards. On to level one. We have this broken Akatsuki, Senju Gahara. Uh, on play, ditch a card, look at top four, take a strange character. I guess note that this effect only comes online if you have experience two or higher, but that's a bit of a... Uh, non-requirement in this deck where we are running so many level threes and you're gunning for experience costs for all of your other cards as well I think this like is, this is like the card that keeps monogatari like a playable deck absolutely yeah you ne you never don't run four copies of this you're always in red because the only good finisher is also in red uh it accelerates you through your deck as akatsuki's tend to do Gives you more selectivity. This is yeah. Solid card. Yeah. Not it's much more to say. Solid <laughs> card profile. Yeah, it's just on play 5k Akatsuki is really, really good. Especially for an older deck. Like, mm -hmm. just having this level of manipulation very strong. Man, when are we going to get another Monogatari set? Never, unfortunately. Kizu set win, dude. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right, next card. We've got the Konbaru Bomb. It is a level one bomb. So it's a straight up reverse bomb. It reverses the character across from it when it becomes reversed, if that character's level one or higher. You have the option to reverse your opponent's character. And to attempt to make up for the, uh, the lack of plussing that this deck has, uh, this card, when it becomes reversed, you reveal the top card of your deck, and if that card is level 2 or higher, which about half the time it is in this build, uh, this card pops back to hand and uh, and replaces itself, refunds its costs, cost itself, 
<laughs> and lives and lives to uh, lives to attack another day. Helps keep the board clear. Um, the coin flip's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know your answer to things that are bigger than five k. So yeah, I mean considering the Akatsuki is uh, is five k. This deck is not uh, particularly high on power through level one. This is your board holding tool to try to reverse your opponent's threats up through this point. And, and it makes up the entirety of the level one game in combination with the uh, the Senjo because we're not running the the typical uh, shot combo here at level one. Yeah, just seven cards. That's it. Not a lot. But make up for it at level two, right? Mm -hmm. Speaking of level two, we've got the star of the show here. This 2-2 Hanakawa. Uh, if you have experience five or higher, it sits at 95. And when you play the bar, you choose two strange characters in your waiting room and put them in your stock. So when this card, or on the turn this, this card uh, comes down, especially if you try field it, you are, you are essentially cleaning your stock with the climax combo. You pay out six stock for three of them, and then you, uh, you replenish that stock with six clean cards from your waiting room. You then also get three attacks off of your Hanakawas, providing you three more stock. So you're sitting at at least nine on that turn. And then with the potential power buffs from the back row, from the Global 500 and the Brainstorm, hopefully they live through another turn. The combo is off of bar, so there's a good chance you, if you weren't already holding another one, trigger into another one, and then proceed to just generate an absurd amount of stock off of these cards. That is the primary game plan of this deck. It's the the best the best kind of combo that loses the stock swap. Unfortunately, very vulnerable to stock swap. Yeah, we cry when yeah. we play. We cry when we see good players. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the the ability for this to steamroll is really crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, I think this kind of combo has kind of been power crept out a bit, but like. With the cards being unbanned, I think it has legs again. Um, yeah. Now, if Monogatari had standby, mm. we might be in business. Yeah, standby would make this card really scary. But, alas, mm -hmm. no support. Unfortunate. All right, our next card, we play two copies of the anti-change backup. Uh, it's this card serves a dual function in our deck. It is a 2,500 power backup to protect the Hanakawa walls, and is also a, or I guess it's I guess it's uh, it's threefold. It's an anti-change counter. Unfortunately, only sends to waiting room, but is also a sack counter. So further reverse denial for our deck as well. Yeah, this cost is really steep, but it does have a lot of utility. Yeah, pay two sack one is sad boy hours, but might save you. Yeah, it removes priority targets if you really need it. But similar to uh, to other bad ish waiting room anti changes, this is the kind of card that you just you show your opponent when you search it out, just to just to let them know that you uh, you have it and to make them again you... think hard think harder about their plays. And you got all that stock. So exactly. they'll think they're yeah. not afraid to use it. Yeah, the two-stock uh, requirement, especially if you get off the Hanakawa combo more than once, is almost negligible. All right, next card, we have our other quote-unquote level two play. This is essentially a beater at level two. It acts as a wall breaker. It early plays if you have two or fewer climaxes in your waiting room. And then on the turn it's played, it sits at 14-5 until the end of your opponent's next turn. And neither you or your opponent can play backups during, uh, during battles involving this card. So usually, uh, if you can't get the triple Hanakawa online, or you need to... Uh, to take out something that your opponent has uh, played at level two that is too large for your Hanukkahs to deal with. That's where this card comes in. Uh, slam it down 
and it's almost guaranteed to live until your next turn. So it quote unquote pluses you by living. Yeah, the only out to this is bombs. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I mean, because of the Akatsuki, the it's really consistent to get the early play condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ability to run through your deck between the Akatsuki and the uh, the Mill 3 Araragi. Yeah, you can pretty much always get there. Pretty reasonable, yeah. And yeah, it's it's a beater. It swings for two souls, two turns in a row. Big power, big number. We do like big number. We love big number. But yeah, pretty simple card. Mm -hmm. Alright, next card we have our finisher of choice, I guess. The only viable choice. Uh, if you have experience six, this card sits at 11k. On play, draw two, ditch one. Climax combo with the gate. On attack, ping one. This card mm. mostly mostly exists uh, for the uh, for the fact that it combos with gate. Gate is a climax or a trigger that you definitely want to be running in uh, in an old deck like this that is uh, searching for tools a little bit. Uh, additionally, this card also lets you draw two ditch one on play, which can get you into your anti-damage event, which we'll talk about in a couple cards. And sitting at 11k is not actually that bad, especially with some power buffs in the back row. Pings, I mean, pinging is fine. The, the is, ping is a lot stronger with the Hajikuji package, right? With the Hajikuji package, yeah. But yeah. The Hajikuji package is on, uh, I think it's just two choose one right now with the, uh, yeah. with the Hanakawa combo. So you got to pick. And we chose the cat. But, yeah, I mean, it, it is a perfectly serviceable finisher, I think, because it's on gate or door or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Cantrips, filters you. Really good for an older deck. Yeah. And free ping one is fine. It's fine, yeah. Like I said, you mainly play it for the gate. You're you're incidentally running this card because you want to have gate as a trigger in your deck, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Also, it's a level three. This card makes its way into the, into the, uh, the level zone as your red requirement more often than not. For experience. Yeah. All right, so on this next card... This is probably one of my favorite cards in the deck. I really like this card. Sits at 11k if you have two or more other strange characters. On play, lets you look at the top card of your deck and either keep it there or put it on the bottom. And then you can reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is a strange character, this card gets on reverse clock shoot till the end of the turn, just for free. So it confirms its own uh, top check trigger, sits at 11k, <laughs> and then just clock shoots because. Yeah, the fact that it confirms its own effect is really good. Mm -hmm. So this is your off finisher, or maybe even finisher, since the Senjo isn't that good. Yeah, just and it also like hard removes things from the board, sits big mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, but there there aren't really relevant plusing combos in this deck. You mainly just. Uh, you get the Hanakawa 2 twos out early. You start slamming climaxes and swing for twos and threes all game long and hope something sticks. We love it. We do love it. They'll and eat they, four eventually. They and they do. <laughs> oh, they do. All right, our last character in the deck here. This next card, the only card from OG Bakemon Guitari we're running in here, uh, is this Senjo. If you have experience six, she sits at ten five and gets the ability, when she reverses a level 2 or higher character, you can pay 1 and kill one of your opponent's level 1 or lower characters. So you can, like, a... kill off a back row character or something, maybe? Yeah, you can kill a Brainstorm or something. It's marginally useful. You mainly run this card because it's a, it's a more relevant healer than the other... Uh, 
Then the other choices, this card is in your colors. It's a level three, helps you fulfill experience and can potentially help you modulate damage by maybe opening a lane or getting rid of one of your opponent's uh, key pieces on the board if it comes down to something like that. Probably a card that goes to level zone more often than not. It does, yeah. I mean, but, if, you feel like, if you feel like you need uh, need heals, this is the only healer that I'm running in my list. Yeah, so sometimes so you do. It's there for that. And you have pretty good access to it with the free search and salvage, so yeah. if you need the heal, you can probably get it. All right, and our last card, the 3-3 three, three Glasses event. Uh, this card can only be played if you have five or more cards in your deck. When you play it, you choose any two cards in your waiting room, climaxes included, and return them to your deck and shuffle your deck. Then the card goes to memory. So as you do with uh, with high deck manipulation decks with the Araragi and the Akatsuki, you get yourself down to maybe like 10-ish cards before you go to attacks. You swing in, do all your your triggers, and then as your opponent swings back, shuffle two climaxes back into your deck and triple cancel. Get, get yourself another turn. Every time. Save the game, easy. Except for when you're what you're you're like three and ten or like four and ten, and you eat six. And we love that, it. That also does happen. <laughs> I'm I'm very familiar with that case. <laughs> yeah, this... <laughs> yeah, this card is great though. Unfortunately, the the deck has trouble getting into this into this card. The only way to get it into your hand is either raw draw into it or uh draw two ditch one into it with the uh the Senjo level three climax comboer. Unfortunately, I did lots of looking. This set has no uh no top check X or anything of the sort to grab something like this. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Because this is this card is very powerful if you can always threaten it. Mm -hmm. It's just like it requires you to either death grip it, which death gripping an, an event early game is never good, especially one this late game. Or, uh, like you said, raw draw it. Yeah. But that just makes it better. Your opponent never knows if you actually have it or not. Well, they can, they can look at your... You know, never mind. <laughs> no. We're assuming our opponent doesn't know how to play. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> but yeah, it is a very powerful effect. Um, I don't know if this has ever been printed again. Like, I don't think so. There, there are very few this like just generalized return anything to your library, mm -hmm. and it's an event, so you could play it on your turn, and like set up some like crazy stuff if you like need to do clean triggers or something. I don't know. Like, you're going to play your Hanakawa combo, you need to clean your stock, you, like, play this, put two clean triggers back in, um, then you have four cards, and you, like, stock charge a bazillion and become unkillable. So, right. it, it does have some utility. The option is there. It is definitely a weird one. The strength is in the counter, but mm -hmm. because it's an event, you can use it in wonky ways. And that's, uh, that's all there is to this deck. Uh, we a bar gate, yeah. yeah it's a bar gate deck, gate for the uh, very necessary pluses and bar because we're running the Hanakawa combo, and that's that's what it's off of. We made our two choose one choice. Lots of these older sets. I mean, we did Vivid Strike last week, and it was also bar gate. Um, the really common climax lineup for these modern builds of older sets because they help you keep up hand against decks that just like plus a bazillion for free. Yeah, I guess I mean bar is also a uh it's a plusing trigger that helps you push damage. Yep. So not much more to say there. We've got our whole list here. Uh like I said before, the game plan of the deck is to survive level zero and one. Uh, get into as many Hanukkahs as possible, level two, slam the bar, start cleaning your stock, compress really hard, clear threats with the Kambaru, and then just vanilla swing hard and hope something sticks. Which Damn. 
Yeah, it's uh unfortunate premise for a deck, but that's all Monogatari's got to work with. Got good art, though. It does. It's a, it's a big strength of the set. Which is uh, it's even more sad for English, because we don't, nice. have, we don't have the second season set, which has these slightly better cards than yeah. the other bad cards that we have. Unfortunately, it's a JP deck. But, like, I don't know. If your locals is, like, mixed, but people mostly play English, Monogatari is, like, a fine set to play into. Maybe not the most modern English sets now, but... Um, I, t- I top locals with this all the time. <laughs> it's he's not wrong, um, and this is all this is all second season except for the Senjukahara level three, and I believe the the Hajikuji. The Hajikuji is Nisei, right? It is. Okay. Yeah, the salvage one, the experienced salvage one, the red one. Okay, so yeah, so it's but it's mostly all second season. Everything else is the uh, the second season set that we don't have in English. I think it's really interesting that the um, the Monogatari cards have the what what Monogatari series it's from like plastered on the card art as well. Interesting tidbit. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. They all have their own little thing on there, so you can see exactly which one it's from. Except for Bake, they don't have one. Fun fact. But yeah, I guess that's it. Um, like I always do, throw the try to throw the slide on all of our digital content. Um, People f- find Weiss videos on YouTube. Don't know where to go otherwise. So just wanted to throw this on here. The Card Games Discord, Competitive White Schwartz Discord. We don't own those. Um, they're run by other people. Competitive White Schwartz run by Burn One. Card Games is run by a ton of people. You never can't keep track. Um, but if you're looking to play games, especially in the lockdown quarantine world that we are in right now, you can find webcam or tabletop games there as well as good discussion. The Facebook groups are mostly buy sell trade communities, but the global one does have like card translated cards of the day come out as well as some discussions. So make sure you check that stuff out. And we also have all our Twitters down there. So give us a follow if you'd like. Um, upcoming content: uh, Bang Dream Volume Two. We're working on that right now. Yeah, uh, we got we got like the Ras TD in two colors done the other day. We got to like schedule with our other guest because we're having two guests on. This one, uh, people that play Bang Dream in English pretty heavily, so we wanted to get their opinion. Um, so we're trying to schedule that stuff out. Look forward to that in the future. Uh, but yeah, anything else, Brian? I think that's about it. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Pittsburgh Weisworth signing off. We'll see you all in the next one. See you guys.